what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i did not get to check out night one and night two of the uh wwe draft for this year but i was able to check out uh some of the clips when i was able to you know actually have the time to uh for those who don't know i was um chilling with my friend uh jess well we're actually born and friends we're dating right now but i was chilling with her because she you know finally uh came to houston this was her first time in houston so i wanted to show her around the city and you know have a good time with her and spend time with her so i wasn't able to check it out this weekend but i was going to make sure that i did check out the clips i needed to check out and and checked out what was made you know what was happening draft wise who was sent where and shout out to this person one of the subscribers of the channel i gotta give him a shout out cornelius conley he took time out of his day on friday and on monday night to let me know who was drafted where and i really do appreciate that man so shout out to you bro thank you so much for keeping me updated with that and um yeah, man, I, I really do appreciate the, the support, man. So, first things first, before we get into the drafts and the draft picks and stuff like that, I want to talk about the clips, like the clips that I saw on SmackDown for SmackDown and the clips I saw for Monday Night Raw. Start with SmackDown. Uh, of course, you guys see my reaction to uh, Brock Lesnar pretty much laying waste to the bloodline. Uh, he took care of everybody. Roman, you know, definitely had a, a few shots in. But ultimately, Brock Lesnar uh, prevailed in that segment. There was also another segment backstage where Brock is pretty much saying Paul Heyman is the reason why Brock Lesnar is a free agent. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he can float between shows. He can uh, appear on SmackDown. He can appear on Raw. Which, you know, I, I think that suits him better. So, he's a free agent. And when you find this out, it creates them some dissension between Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns. Because Roman Reigns is trying to figure out what's going on here. How did how were you able to make Brock Lesnar a free agent? What What is happening here? He was really concerned. I like the segment he has. Uh, with Roman Uso, the Usos, and um, Paul Heyman. And he starts getting really pissed off at Paul. Paul's selling like his eyes was red, like he's been crying. He's making this segment even better. And he's like, okay, so you can do all this for Brock Lesnar, but what about the Usos? They haven't been drafted to SmackDown yet. Make sure that they are drafted to SmackDown. That was pretty much his mission for Monday Night Raw, to make sure they was drafted to SmackDown. As he leaves the room, he tells the Usos, if you guys are not drafted to SmackDown, well, leave Paul Heyman for dead. Pretty much, you know, pretty much screw Paul Heyman. If y'all don't get on SmackDown, leave him for dead at Raw. I'm done with him. So I, I like that this storyline with Brock being back is created some dissension because you really don't know is he really helping out Brock on the low like what's happening here I like this this is probably the most interesting storyline that's on WWE television right now that was one of the more notable things that happened on Smackdown for me uh personally uh I do like the segment with Seth Rollins that Seth Rollins segment oh my gosh Seth actually going to to Edge's crib. Edge pull, you know, comes back. He makes his return. He's pretty much calling out Seth. Like, yo, you, you this is what you want to do? Fine. Come out here. Rollins makes the case. Oh, I didn't think you was gonna show up, so I showed up to your crib. He's just being a complete ass in Edge's crib, just opening up his fridge, leaving the fridge open, being a true asshole, a true heel. Just sitting on his on his uh living room area, like looking at the family photos. I'm like, yo, they have just taken this feud to the next level. This is what I like with secondary feuds. We know Roman Reigns will usually have the better feuds, but a good secondary feud that doesn't involve the title is always good as well. You can tell this is they're building up something personal. When you come to another man's crib. It gets personal. 
it reminds me when Triple H broke into uh, supposedly Randy Orton's crib and attacked him. It, it gives me those feels. I like that segment. I like this segment. So I thought that was another noticeable thing on SmackDown. So I definitely did check it out for you guys that was hitting me up saying I need to check that out. So let's get into the raw notable side of things. <clears throat> so it looks like they're setting up a match between Goldberg and uh, Bobby Lashley. Excuse me. I need to get some water because I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I'm leaving that in. So there, it looks like they're setting up a match between Bobby Lashley, Goldberg, which you knew they were going to continue it because, I mean, the last match they had, he pretty much put his hands, Bobby Lashley put his hands on Goldberg's son. So you knew <clears throat> that this was going to play in at some point. And uh, I believe they made it a, a nose holds barred match. Pretty much a no disqualification match, which Goldberg definitely wanted. I actually enjoyed this segment more than I thought it would because I, I really don't too much care for Goldberg being back on television. But I actually enjoyed this segment. I actually enjoyed this because it it, it it did give me some nostalgic Goldberg vibes like, yo, he's going to try to kill him. Which it makes sense. He put his hands on his son. And I like the line that he was giving to Bobby Lashley. But Goldberg was pretty nice on the mic for the most part here. He's basically saying, yo, yo, you know what I'm saying? Imagine like imagine your kids gonna have to watch as I destroy their father. Like I like it was getting personal. I enjoy that. Of course, of course, the hurt business. Coming from a behind and tackle him, but Goldberg makes quick work of him. Looks looks like this is just going to be a match at Crown Jewel to just destroy shit. I'm actually kind of interested in see who they're gonna have win in this match. Cause you already had Bobby Lashley beat him, so I can see them giving them giving Goldberg the rub. I'm I'm not sure if I would be. I don't think I'll be disappointed if, if Goldberg won. It doesn't really hurt Bobby Lashley because it is a no DQ. I'm pretty sure they're going to go back and forth. So I'm looking forward to that, actually, surprisingly, at Crown Jewel. Um, Becky Lynch, the Becky Lynch, uh, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, they're having this triple threat feud right now. I believe they're going to have a match at Crown Jewel, which I'm actually enjoying. It's putting a lot of nice spotlight on on the women's division on the SmackDown side of things. Bianca Belair was having a match with the the Raw uh, women's champion, uh, Charlotte Flair. And uh, they were um, at the end of the match, that's when, um, uh, what's her name? Becky Lynch came in, interfered, caused a DQ. Then Sasha Banks come in, make quick work, both of Bianca and and uh, um, Becky Lynch standing tall in the middle of the ring. Looking forward to that triple threat match. I think that's going to be a very good match. They're building it up just right. Becky Lynch is a heel. Sasha, she's technically a heel, but it works because I don't think anyone would have a problem if Sasha regained the title. And Bianca Belair is like the ultimate babyface in the situation. So I'm looking forward to it. I think that's going to be pretty cool. And then, of course, Drew McIntyre is pretty much, I guess, going to have a match with Big E. They're, they're setting that up or whatnot. Um, me, honestly, is just one of those type of things where it's like, uh, I get it. I get it. They're trying to, I guess you can say, um, give Big E uh, a, a, a nice notable competitor. I just wish it was somebody else other than Drew. And if it's gonna be Drew, him being a baby face just doesn't work for me in this situation. I think it would be better if he was a heel going against Bobby, uh, going against Big E for the WWE Championship. But we will see how things play out. So those are some of the notable moments from Raw. So let's get right into this draft list. Uh, for draft night uh, number one for SmackDown. Once again, shout out to Cornelius Conley. He sent me the list, so we're going to check this out. So the number one draft pick on SmackDown was obviously going to be Ron, uh, Roman Reigns. It only makes sense. He is the universal champion. The number two pick, obviously, 
Big E for Raw. He's the WWE champion. Um, I am glad that Roman is still on SmackDown. The only reason why I wouldn't want him to go to Raw is not because I don't think he could make Raw better. It's just Raw is a three-hour show. If it was a two-hour show, I wouldn't mind that switch up. I wouldn't mind him going to, uh, to, to Monday Night Raw. It would definitely freshen things up. More people would probably watch Raw to see Roman Reigns on there. But it's a three-hour show. If it was a two-hour show, that would have been cool. But it's good that he's on uh, SmackDown still. Fox is loving the fact that he's still on SmackDown. I don't think Fox was going to let that go because they definitely enjoy Roman Reigns' character and what he's doing for the company and that brand. Charlotte Flair uh, on SmackDown. This was night one. Bianca Belair on Raw. Okay. Drew McIntyre on SmackDown. RK Bro on Raw. Um Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods on SmackDown. Okay with that decision. Edge on Raw. I'm okay with that decision. Baron Corbin, Riddick Moss on SmackDown. Do anyone care? Not so much. Rhea Ripley and Nikki Cross on Raw. They obviously need to stay on Raw because Raw doesn't have too many women on the division right now. Hit Raw on SmackDown. Keith, Bearcat, Lee. That's what y'all was telling me. What's up with his nickname? Bearcat? The fuck is... Why you just can't call him Keith... He's on Raw. Naomi on SmackDown. Ray and Dominic on Raw. Interesting. I like that. I like that decision. Jeff Hardy on SmackDown. I like that decision. Austin Theory on Raw. Okay. So, um, here's the thing that I do like about this draft. And I guess supposedly the these, uh, these picks won't really take place until... Uh, I want to say after Crown Jewel. That's when these picks are effective, after Crown Jewel. So it works because Crown Jewel, they can switch the titles where they need to be switched. And that way it doesn't cause any confusion. Because if Charlotte Flair is on Raw, but she's the on SmackDown, but she's the Raw Women's Champion. It doesn't make sense unless something flips, unless the title is changed somehow, and it flips where she drops the title or whatnot, and she ends up on SmackDown. So, interested to see how those things play out. All right. Um, then uh, he sent me uh, the more picks announced on Talking Smack. My man was literally watching all this stuff just to update me so shout out to you once again cornelius conley man uh, uh reginald reggie drafted the raw Aliyah. i don't even know who that is smackdown uh akira tozawa raw drew gulak smackdown otis and jack gable raw mace smackdown apollo and commander aziz raw okay that's not a bad switch up for apollo mansoor and mustafa mustafa ali smackdown uh dow drop who? Do -do who? Dow drop? Do drop? I don't know. On Raw. Tony Storm, SmackDown. I'm okay with that. Drake Maverick on Raw. John Morrison, Raw. T Bar, Raw. Nia Jax. Who cares where she goes? But Nia Jax on Raw. R Truth on Raw. S Selena Vega uh, on Raw. Okay. Cool. Now, a lot of these are mid card guys, lower card guys. I, I don't really too much care for. But, you know, I am glad that Apollo Cruz is on Raw. Maybe he, you know, gets a gets more so get a better shine. I mean, he was getting a decent amount of uh, love on uh SmackDown, so hopefully they can continue that. He doesn't get lost in the shuffle on Raw. Night 2 for Monday Night Raw. Becky Lynch was the number 1 draft pick. So she's the SmackDown champ, but she's on Raw with the uh, Raw uh, uh, with the Raw Women's Champ. So I'm pretty sure they'll be able to float between the shows until Crown Jewel. The Usos on SmackDown, which pe uh, Paul Heyman was definitely happy about storyline wise, and of course they need to stay with Roman. Bobby Lashley on Raw makes sense. Sasha Banks on SmackDown makes sense. Seth Rollins on Raw. This works perfectly because now edge is on raw which means they can continue their feud that is that that is something that i i think that was smart obviously booking wise they can continue their feud 
and plus Becky Lynch is on uh, Raw as well. She stay with stay with a. Uh, uh, with uh, Seth Rollins, since they are a real life couple, and I'm interested to see where they take this feud on Raw, because Raw definitely needs some more feuds to carry on outside of the main event. So, definitely looking forward to where they take this. Looking forward to their future matches and how you know how personal personal are they gonna get? King Nakamura, Rick Boogs, who? Uh, SmackDown, Damian Priest, Raw, Sheamus on SmackDown. Interesting switch up. We can get some some fresh matchups. I'm not. I'm rocking with that. AJ Styles and almost Raw makes sense. Shayna Baszler on SmackDown, please. For the love of everything that is holy, allow Shayna Baszler to be the Shayna Baszler she deserves in the women's division. That's all I ask. Kevin Owens, Raw. Okay, cool. I'm okay with that. Uh, Zia Lee, SmackDown, The Street Profits on Raw. Oh, okay, they switched them over to Raw. Viking Raiders on SmackDown. Like that. Viking Raiders versus The Usos. Sign me up. Finn Balor on Raw. Okay. All right, let's see, see what they do with Finn Balor on Raw. Ricochet on SmackDown. Hopefully, he gets some, some, some more spotlight on SmackDown, which I think he will. Karrion Cross on Raw. Makes sense. Humberto uh, Car uh, Carrillo. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. Carrillo? Carlillo? Humberto Carrillo? I, I can't. Humberto, goddammit. <laughs> and Angel Garza on SmackDown. <laughs> Alexa Bliss on Raw. That's cool. Cesaro still on SmackDown. Carmella on Raw. Ridge Holland. Don't know who that is. SmackDown. Gable Stevenson. Raw. Sami Zayn. SmackDown. Side note, all the draft picks we have won't be effective till October 22nd after Crown Jewel. That's what he sent to me. And uh, that was probably, that was it from what he sent to me. I'm, if there's anything else, let me know. If there's any picks I missed, let me know down below. But yeah, this was dope. I, I, I like some of the pick decisions. I just only hope all the people that went to Raw... Don't get lost in the shuffle because it is a three-hour show and it is kind of a hassle to watch a three-hour show. It just is. If it was a two-hour show, it would probably be a little bit better. I guess you can say, oh, we have more time to put other stories on. But those stories have to be compelling. So hopefully they are able to definitely make use of the time they have, put on some more compelling stories on Raw because Raw is needs it raw needs a story like seth rollins versus edge they need that story right now they do they do so comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed this year's draft i want to get your thoughts and opinion do you guys feel the picks made sense and people where they are are in the right place also let me know if you guys are looking forward to crown jewel I, I am definitely looking forward to Crown Jewel even more of even more outside of the Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar match. I'm looking forward to the triple threat match between the, for the between the ladies for the SmackDown Championship. I'm actually looking forward to the Goldberg and Bobby Lashley match because it's just gonna be a fun. They just destroy the ring the ringside area match. So I'm looking forward to that. So comment down below. Let me know. What you guys are looking forward to at Crown Jewel if you enjoyed the draft this year. Appreciate all love and support. Road to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.